Thank you for this time together. We love you, we bless you, and praise you, and worship you. Thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit that is our teacher. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord God, for taking us where you want us to go this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. Now, Sunday school, I consider to be considerably different than uh, when I'm up here preaching or teaching in that respect. So, should you have a question, uh, if, as I'm going through it, I don't feel it an interruption for you to uh, raise your hand or stand up or whatever you want to do to make your request known. And we'll address it because it's Sunday school. So, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. And if you do, I'll have the ushers escort you out. <laughs> <laughs> That's slow, and she's not here. <laughs> Turn with me, if you would, to Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Hebrews chapter six. Praise God. God is so good, isn't he? Glory. I trust you all had a wonderful fourth, and, yeah, third and fifth. the glorious thing is that we bound that demonic forces, us and millions of people in the United States, right. and, and they were not able to do anything, to pull anything off yesterday. Amen. So that is a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. It does concern me that there are many sleeper cells inside of America and people that are crazy enough that want to join up with ISIS or consider themselves a part of it. Mm -hmm. And you don't know where they're at or what they're capable of doing, mm -hmm. but we just bound those spirits that control them. And, uh, hallelujah, they can't do anything. Then. That's right. So Hebrews chapter 6 Verse 12, prayer is not a waste of time, is it? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. It's very important. Verse 12 said, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So the admonition here is, don't be lazy. Hallelujah. Although I felt a little lazy yesterday. I got a day off I don't usually get. Right. So I did uh, take a short nap. Excellent. Hallelujah. But overall, it says don't be slothful in the things of the Spirit it's talking about. But be followers of them, those who have gone before us, those who are there now, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Two things there, faith and patience. Glory to God. Well, faith is now, isn't it? Yeah. Patience, su patience suggests future. I'm waiting on it, right? Amen. So they're combined here. I'm going to talk about that a little bit this morning. That these two forces, faith and patience, are what enable you to inherit the promises, all the promises. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 said all the promises in him yes. are yes and amen. So be it unto mm -hmm. the glory of God by us. So how many promises are yes and amen? All of them. Are any excluded? No. So if I can find a promise for a situation I'm in mm -hmm. and will exercise my faith and patience, mm -hmm. does that mean I can have it? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's what it says. That's what it means. No explaining it away. It is what it is. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Praise me. in light of that, faith and patience to inherit the promises, let's go to Mark, the 11th chapter. You guys probably know that by heart, but we're going to look at it anyway in the Amen. scriptures here make sure I don't paraphrase it and leave something out. Mark 11, verse 23 says, For verily, Jesus is talking, he says, For truly I say unto you, that whosoever, the whosoever means I can put my name in there, right? That's right. Yeah. It was good yesterday, and it's good today, and it'll be good tomorrow. Amen. For the whosoever's that will take it, is that correct? That's correct. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, mountain representing something huge in your life. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever had mountains in your life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody mm -hmm. got mountains today in your yeah. life? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, 
<laughs> There's a few from time to time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jesus said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. You're saying to the mountain now. Be removed. Be cast into the sea. Get out of my way, mountain, in other words. Get out of the way. Yeah. Right. And shall not doubt in his heart. <laughs> not your mind, but your heart. Mm -hmm. But shall believe that those things which he saith, get out of the way, mountain, yeah, yeah. shall come to pass, shall come to pass. That's future. Yeah. Yeah. He'll have whatever he says. He shall have. Okay. The word shall is used future. Shall is future. you got to understand this in order to walk by faith or you're going to get discouraged. Okay, so what happened here, verse 23, is that we say to the mountain, we make the faith command. We exercise our faith and we say, get out of the way, mountain, whatever your mountain is. And it's our job not to let doubt into our heart. But we believe that we receive, which we're going to read next. And it's God's job to move the mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. You can't move the mountain yourself. Nope. Even though you might be the mighty man or woman of faith, you still can't move it yourself. <laughs> no. God has to do it. That's right. Yeah. Honoring your faith. Mm -hmm. So, it's a future tense. It could happen that minute. It could happen like an explosion at the second you said it. Or it could be a year from now. Amen. It could be five years from now. Amen. Verse 24, let's look at this a little closer. Therefore, when you see therefore in the Bible, see what it's there for. Okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> therefore, because we just said this, therefore, Jesus now says to us, a little explanation here, what things soever you desire. Does that leave anything out? No. Only the things you don't desire, right? True. If you desire it, it says what things soever you desire. There it is. When you pray. And here's your time element. At the time of prayer. This is where the church gets confused. And they come through the prayer line. And they walk up to the prayer line. And you pray for them. You say, are you healed? And they go to feeling to see. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Well, no, that's not what we said. At the time of prayer, you believe you receive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Irregardless of the mountain, mm -hmm. right. of the position of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Amen. But at the time of your prayer, that is the time to believe yeah. that you have it. Yeah. Amen. This is key. This is this will help you in your faith walk. Okay? Yeah. Amen. Whatever you desire, when you pray, at the time of prayer, at that time, mm -hmm. believe you receive it. And that, that would be in the faith and patience clause of Hebrews 6.12. That's the faith part. And here's the patience. And you shall have them. Shall have them is future. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now please don't use this as an excuse for unbelief to explain why you don't ever get any prayers answered. Amen. I'm in the shall have mode, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never anything happens, but it shall come to pass. <laughs> you know, you get real religious and God said. Yeah. I shall have. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, I want to teach you the difference in that. At the time of prayer, I've got to lay hold of it yeah. as if I possessed it now. Yeah. Right. I have to do that in the spirit realm because the mountain is still staring me in the face. Right. Yeah, right. right? The mountain is still there. I see it with my natural eyes. I can feel it with my hands. It's there. Right. But I've made the faith command. I've prayed the prayer of faith. And I believe I received that mountain moved Amen. out of my way. Amen. Thank you. At the time I prayed. Time I pray. Not because I saw the mountain move, because maybe I didn't see it move yet, physically speaking. Amen. 
But because the Word of God said this is the way to operate in the Spirit, that's the way I'm going to operate. Amen. And so, I speak, I believe, I receive, at that moment, in the spirit realm, it's birthed within me, that I have it. In fact, my confession becomes, just like in verse 23, that I have it. Yes. My confession says what my heart believes, yes. right? Isn't that what Matthew 12, I think verse 34 said? Out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth, maybe 1236. Yes. But out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Right. So I believe so much that my mountain is moved that even though the mountain is staring me in the face and all my friends and relatives say, well, you're crazy, that mountain is there. I'm saying, no, it's not. God moved it. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. And as long as I stay in that mode... It has to go. Yeah. It has to go. I can't say the day it'll go or the hour or the minute, mm -hmm. but I can guarantee you, somehow, some way, outside of my little pea brain thinking, it's going to move. Yeah. I mean, I try yeah. to tell God how to do it all the time. Yeah, me too. I, I used to sit and figure out how to answer my prayer. Oh, yeah. You ever done that? Yeah. I mean, you ask God for something, but first you figure out how he can do it. <laughs> and you map it out in yeah. your mind. Yeah. In your mind. And yet, if he'll, you know, he could do this and then move this one over here and then this one there and then this one here, and boom, it'll be done. So, yes, I can believe for that, God. All right. I believe I receive. Yeah, I know. But the problem with that is that God jumps out of those boxes you put in the You don't like to be put yeah. in a box. No, he doesn't. So, so Thank you, Lord. there was one point in my life that I did that. I had it mapped out. I told him how he ought to answer my prayer. Yep. Yep. And uh, I prayed and believed, and I was okay at first, and as the time got closer for the mountain to move, <laughs> I started sweating. Yep. <laughs> and then the day come the mountain was supposed to be gone, and the mountain was still staring me in the face. Yeah. I was more than sweating, I got upset. <laughs> and I went to the Lord and I said, now Lord, you know, I believed I received when I prayed. I did what the Bible said. I don't understand why it's not moved. Why, why am I left lacking in this situation? And actually, I was a little upset. And uh, it was a little self-righteous, I guess you'd call it, because, you know, I thought I was so full of faith it should work. Hallelujah. But somehow left God out of the picture in there somewhere and it became all me instead of me and God. <laughs> so, anyway... After I calmed down, the Lord showed me exactly that thing. He said to me, well, look at what you're doing. You're putting your faith in how it's going to be answered right. instead of in the Word of God. And so my, my vision, my faith, my everything was on how I had figured out he was going to do it. Right. And that's where my faith was. And if you get your faith off of the Word of God, it doesn't matter if it's just a little bit off. If it's off the Word of God, you open yourself up to disaster. That's right. That's right. And so I repented. Yes. And I learned to stay with the Word, not, not try to tell God. Anything. So faith, believing we receive at the time of prayer, and patience means we shall have yes. in the natural. But faith, real faith, is now. I possess it now. Yes. I have to say it's mine now. That's right, that's right. I have to believe it's mine now. Yes. So much so it's an action in my life. Yes. But the mountain's still there trying to tell me I'm a liar. Yes, exactly. And even people, well-meaning friends, say, well, you're lying if you say you're well and you're really sick. <laughs> Well, that's because they don't have this revelation that that's in my right, spirit, right. I'm healed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. And, and the only way it's going to manifest in the natural is for me to get it inside first. I can tell you that. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. And so, Thank you, Lord. who's lying, really? The Word of God or our symptoms? It's the symptom, right? The Word of God can't lie. Right. Thank you, Lord. But uh, the world doesn't understand even the... the, the, the Lukewarm church doesn't understand that. Even some of the warm church doesn't understand that. And they think we're out in left field there. We're not really out in left field. We're just obeying what God says to do. Right. That's calling those things that be not as though they were. Hallelujah. So, 
Shall is future. And so that means that's God's part, God's timing. Now, there is a divine timing with God with things, no question about it. But I believe many times, now listen to me close and don't get mad at me. I believe many times the timing with God was long before we ever got it, before the shall have gets there. Because of a lack of faith, because we're doing battle. You see, when you're when you're wrestling with it and fighting back and forth and trying to believe, you're really not in faith. That's right. Yeah. I mean, you're really working, you're laboring to enter into the rest, but you're not in the rest yet. When you really believe, when you really exercise your faith, you have it, and there's no fight anymore. It's over. You know that you know that you know it's done. You're in the rest. That's right. And that can be very deceptive too. So anyway, I'll tell you, one time I was, God told me to go to Nigeria in West Africa. Well, I didn't have any money. I think the ticket was a couple thousand dollars. I said, well, it's not cheap, you know. It's not a vacation land where they run specials. Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So God told me to go to Nigeria. I said, okay, I'm willing to go. Hallelujah. And I began to confess, I'm going to Nigeria, I'm going to preach. I set up contacts over there, and uh, it came time that I needed to buy my ticket. The earlier you buy them, the cheaper you can get them. Well, that passed, and I said, well, if I can believe God for the lower amount, I can believe for the higher amount, it's fine. Well, that came, and here comes the time I need to be over there. Well, I didn't get it. I didn't get the money. So I canceled the trip. I told me you just have to wait. I didn't cancel it for good. I just said, well, we're going to have to postpone it because I didn't have the money. Right. I didn't have the 2000 by the ticket. I didn't have the money to live while I was over there. Right. Well, now I have heard, Bill Winston tells the story of the gentleman that was called to go to India, and he didn't have any money. He went and stood in the line at the airport to go to India, and then he said, Lord, this is stupid. Hmm. I ain't going to stand here and embarrass myself. So he walked into the bathroom, the men's room of the airport, and within seconds, he didn't know how, but then whenever he walked out, he was in airport in India. <laughs> now, God can do it that way. Yes, he can. But I wasn't up to that yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they were translated in the Bible, you know. Yeah. yeah. Philip. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's there. And Bill Winston is no small preacher. I mean, yeah. he's going to be telling something that's not true. Yeah. He's got a huge outreach and a huge church there in the Chicago. Right. So, anyway, uh, he knows the guy. The guy ended up, he, he was just in the airport over in India. You know, come out of the bathroom there. Praise God. Whoa. <laughs> Well, I wasn't quite there yet. I was having a little trouble with $2,000, which has been translated to another country. Right, right. So anyway, I canceled everything. I didn't go stand in line or anything. I just canceled it. And I, uh, I, I, I continued to believe God for the money and continue to seek the Lord. And the amazing thing about this is, see, that's believe when you receive. Well, I didn't really believe, but I thought I believed. And you shall have, okay? Well, I'm still looking for the shall have. And... So it, I make plans again, I make preparation again, and the Holy Spirit showed to me, back then I was buying and selling houses, yeah. and I had an American Express account. The American Express had reward points, <laughs> and that was easy to spend ten or $15,000 a month oh, fixing yeah. houses, yeah. and then pay it off, go to sell a house, pay it off. Mm -hmm. You have to pay American Express off every month. So uh, I had built up a lot of points, <laughs> a lot of those you know, whatever, but I didn't think about that. Yeah. But let me tell you, those points were there when I canceled the first trip. Oh, right. Well, the Lord showed to me the points and said, why don't you check on that? <laughs> and so I did, and I had been sitting there a year on those points, not realizing I could fly. I, I could have made the first trip, but because, again, I had got in a box. Right. Yeah. In a box. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. hearing the shall have was already there. It was it was in my account manifested, and I was too ignorant and blinded to see it. Yeah. Well, anyway, I enjoyed my trip to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I went over there. I was abducted while I was there, but I enjoyed it anyway. <laughs> we, we were we were traveling by taxi from Lagos, the capital city, to Otupo, where I preached, and uh, we were in a cab. 
was me and Abba. Abba was the contact, the young man that met me at the airport and that invited me to come. And we were in the back seat, the taxi driver was in the front seat, and our luggage was in the back. It was a station wagon. Yeah. They surrounded the car. Now, in the streets there, it's not like, it would be like Manila or something to the Philippine yeah. ladies, because it was bumper to bumper. You can't move. You can't run, is what I'm saying. You I'm couldn't cool. gas it and run. You couldn't go to the other lane and run. You can't do anything. You're stuck there. You're yeah. sitting. Mm -hmm. wow. So they surround the car. There's nothing you can do. Oh. And they stopped the traffic and pulled us over and made us park on the side there. And me and the boss, like I said, we start praying. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm coming home. This is it. I'm a, I'll, I'll see you soon, Lord. <laughs> and uh, they, they were, you could tell they were drug crazed, their eyes bloodshot. They were just, it Whoa. was a pretty harrowing experience. And, and so they pulled the driver out, taking him down behind some structure. And a bar and he looks at one of the guys was had us held, and he says to me, Sirs, we're missionaries. We're, we're here for the work of the Lord. Yeah, and the guy went down behind the house there and must have told the other guy. And whatever he said worked because they brought the, the driver back, didn't rob him, didn't rob us, didn't go through nothing, oh, and, and looked at us mean like and said, Get out of here. Wow. Oh, we didn't hesitate. We took off. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So on my way back from Otupo to Lagos, I caught an in-house flight, you know, an African flight. I didn't take the taxi back. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So anyway, <laughs> look at Luke yeah. chapter 21. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, we, whenever I went to Pakistan, I got off the plane, and they had armed guards with these machine guns. I don't know which AKs or whatever. They're big guns. Yeah. They had them meet me at the airport there. I didn't ask for that. I didn't even think about it. Hmm. And as we're driving along in the car, I, I, I thought to myself, we're driving along in the car, and they got their guns in the car. Oh. And, uh, yeah. and I thought to myself, you know what? I'm not sure I want them to use those guns. Maybe I'd just rather go on. If, if they capture me, let me go. Don't, don't, I don't yeah. know about all this killing people. Yeah. But uh, I, that didn't happen. But at the services, the evening services, they had like six armed guards with machine guns out front of the church, wow. which is a house church, by the way, in order to keep anybody from coming in that they weren't supposed to be coming in. Praise God. That may go on the mission field. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, we got to get out of our comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. You know, I mean, I can't help it if people's <laughs> mean and got guns. Well. That's the ones I'm supposed to reach. Yes, yes. All right, so Luke 21. Luke 21, verse 19. Wow. In your patience, possess ye your souls. And he's talking about in the end times here, but this is a good verse for us. In your patience, Possess your soul. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Quit letting your mind, will, and emotions rule you. When you're in faith and you spoke to the mountain and you're, say, you're saying now, it's moved because I believed I received, past tense, it's yeah. done. Yeah. And, and the word says I shall have, God's going to come through for me, but I don't see it in my natural eyes, but in my spirit eyes I see it. <laughs> then with my patience, I must possess my soul. In other words, shut my soul up. Don't let it talk me out of it. Yes, Don't let it make me go another direction. Do something and get out of faith. Yes. Hallelujah. You okay with that? Yes, sir. Yes. A lot can happen between the amen and the there it is, isn't it? Amen. A lot. A lot. We see that in Luke, the 8th chapter. Go to 8th chapter of Luke. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 8, start with verse 5. A sower went out to sow his seed. Mm -hmm. As he sowed, some fell by the wayside. It was trodden down, and fell into the air, devoured it. This is what can happen between the amen and the there it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some fell on a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, we're talking about, this is talking about the word of God, but 
Faith and the Word of God are somewhat synonymous because faith comes by hearing the Word. The Word is faith. We're talking about our faith here in lieu of this, but it's based on the Word of God. Some fell upon a rock as soon as it sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell among thorns, the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Others fell on good ground, sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. So he explains the parable. Verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God, which produces faith in us. So our prayers are based on the word of God, or they're not really, they're not really going to do us any good. We have to base it on the word of God. Verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then comes the devil, takes away the word out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. Now saved here doesn't just mean heaven saved, but it means the mountain moved saved. Yeah. For instance, if your mortgage needs to be paid today, that's a mountain yeah. if you don't have the money to pay it. Yeah. Okay, so that mountain's got to go. Yeah. Well, if you, if you don't act in patience, having believed you received, and allow your soul to act up and tell you, well, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to run here, you got to run there, you got to be afraid, you got to worry, yeah. you got to beg, you got to plead, you got to do whatever. Then you're getting out of faith. Yeah. Verse 13. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. This is the one chance. Yes, praise God. I got it. Bless God. Yeah. Then the times get a little rough. The deadline gets a little closer and you start sweating. Right. Uh -oh. yeah. Which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. Verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares. Cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And they bring forth no fruit to perfection. But the ones that are on good ground, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, keep it, keep it. Stay with it. Consistency. It's not whether or not you're a faith giant, it's whether or not you can just hold on to it. Yeah. And just stay with it. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not a feeling. Nope. It's not an emotion. Nope. It's not a. Uh, um, it's not anything else. It's just a matter of saying, "I choose to believe. I receive. So I have it. So I'm gonna stay in that position. Period. In the story, it's over. I have it. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I feel. I don't care what people say. I have it because God said I have it, and I agree with God. And if two or more agree is touching anything on earth, it'll be done for them by my Father. Hallelujah. All right. So my time is up. Let's close with Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run. They'll not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. Why? Well, when you receive from God this way, Nobody can take that from you. You know, they can steal doctrines from you. They can steal ideas. They can steal, uh, you know, the way you've been brought up and stuff. They can change all that. But you get a hold of a revelation like this from God moving on your behalf where only God can do it in faith. But he, it's going to strengthen you. Now, it says here, they that wait on the Lord, you tend to think, well, you know, just sitting around twiddling your thumbs. Well, that's not what it's saying. If I go to the restaurant... The man that waits on me is what? A waiter. Well, the waiter better not be sitting in the back just waiting on me. He better be out there saying you need this, you need that, How, what can I do for you? you? You know what I'm saying? That's right. the kind of wait on God that we're doing. Right. Right. Father, we love you. Thank, Thank you for this time together. Thank you for your word. Thank you for these Jesus. beautiful people we brought here today. Thank you for having healed Pastor James. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. There's nothing too difficult for you. No mountain too big, nothing. too wide, or too strong. Thank right. you, Lord. Well, thank you, Father. In thank Jesus you. Name, you teach us these principles to apply them. Yes, Lord. That we can walk in the victory you victory. provided through your wonderful sacrifice. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.